welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today's guest is Mr. Andy, Andrew or Andy, if he allows me to call him that, Mr. Andy Hoffman. Uh, Andy Hoffman is a CFA and uh, he joined Miles Franklin and we'll be talking about milesfranklin.com as the marketing director back in October 2011. Uh, now, Mr. Hoffman was a buy-side and sell-side analyst in the United States, uh, including six years as an oil field service analyst at Salomon Smith Barney. Uh, but since 2002, his focus has been entirely in the metals markets, um, mainly gold and silver. Um, now, he recently worked as a consultant to junior mining companies, head of corporate development and VP of investor relations for different mining ventures, and now he's with Miles Franklin, which is a prominent United States-based bullion dealer. Mr. Hoffman, thank you so much for joining me, and may I call you Andy? Yes, no one calls me Mr. Hoffman, and no one calls me Andrew. <laughs> gotcha. Just want to make sure you know how it goes. All yes. right. Now, uh, Mr. Hoffman, I'm sorry, Andy, <laughs> I'm yes. used to that. Um, can you tell me, I, I mentioned as much as I can uh, tell off the top of my head about your background, uh, but can, can we go back a little bit further? How did you get involved in finance in general? Well, I'm from New York. I, don't, I mean, I haven't been there for 10 years, but I grew up there, uh, studied to be a financial analyst, and uh, worked for 15, depending on when you started, 15 plus years on Wall Street, buy side, sell side, bond trading, stock trading, all that stuff. And and uh, I was pretty well deep into that world until I got disenchanted with it at around the turn of the century after the dot-com bubble and all the all the scandals, particularly at Solomon where I was, and just wasn't fun anymore. And it was around that time in 2002 when I got wind of the precious metal story and started investing personally and becoming uh, well-known in the blogosphere even before I left Solomon. And by the time I left Solomon in 2005, I was already writing daily for the uh, Gold Antitrust Action Committee website, or GATA, uh, and I was known at the time as Ranting Andy, and yeah. um, <laughs> then in, um, in, I don't know, 2006 or so, or seven, I started working with mining companies, kind of bridged the gap of my Wall Street experience uh, with my interest in mining, and I worked for, God, five years, uh, either with specific companies or as, an, as a as an investor relations consultant uh, for you know for um, many many different companies and and uh, I got you know I learned a lot about the mining industry and then I got disenchanted with that and moved up with, to what I consider the top of the totem pole uh, with actual physical precious metals when I joined uh, Miles Franklin in 2011 I've since been writing my blog for free every day at milesfranklin.com and doing podcasts like this one for free and trying to help educate people about uh, about the truth of uh, financial markets and, and uh, precious metals. Fantastic. And uh, we are all benefiting from your prolific writing career. Uh, I can't believe my eyes. It looks like you've literally written hundreds or possibly even over a thousand articles. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I write I write pretty much five days a week, and um, I've been doing it at Miles Franklin for close to six years. And before that, I was writing, uh, I would say, several times a week. So I'm, I'm easily in the thousands by now, and the podcasts are in the hundreds. Right. And if people want to read what you have to say about precious metals and uh, macroeconomics in general, uh, I'm assuming they can go to milesfranklin.com. Um, if people visit milesfranklin.com, what can they see and what services do they offer at the moment? Yeah, well, we're a full-service uh, precious metal bullion dealer, buy, sell, trade. Uh, we have some of the industry's best storage programs, most innovative. And, uh, and again, I write every day and podcast for free, so you can just sign up um, to get our free daily newsletter, or you can just, in real time, download my articles. Fantastic. And when you, when you say storage, would that include both offshore storage as well as a safe, de safe deposit box service? Yeah, when you say safe deposit box service, we have a unique private safe deposit service with Brinks Canada in Toronto and Vancouver. It's not at a bank. Uh, no one else that we know has this kind of product. And we also have standard 
um, segregated um, segregated storage programs in in uh, in Canada, and we do offer programs in the United States and overseas as well. But we are not really keen on those uh, for a variety of reasons. Interesting. Uh, now, for some people, they might find they might find it easier if they don't want to deal with uh, storage, insurance, delivery of. Uh, precious metals in physical form, they might find it more convenient just to buy an ETF such as SLV, GLD. Uh, what is your opinion on that as opposed to physical uh, f- physical commodities? You're throwing me a softball question, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, look, I've been, uh, for, I mean, from the beginning when you go back to 2002 when I, I started investing in mining stocks and I, and I sold my last one in 2011. And I also, you know, over time became an expert in all the various ways that you can invest, not just in precious metals, but in the various paper instruments that, that you know, that are underlying so many parts of the markets these days, but particularly in gold and silver. ETFs, uh, you know, like GLD and SLV are pretty much frauds, run by frauds. And uh, there are so many ways that you can lose your money doing them, uh, using them, that it's just not worth doing it. The only way to 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 be in gold and silver, as far as I'm concerned, is to consider what they really are, which is a sto- which is uh, time honored storages of value uh, that you buy and hold as insurance, as preservation of wealth, not to trade. And uh, unless you hold it in your hands, a you can't be guaranteed to be protected. Uh, when when everything starts to hit the fan, but um, you know you're not going to be tempted to trade out of it when, as I call it, the cartel uh, tries to knock prices down and scare you out of your positions. Interesting fraud, strong word. I like it though. Um, it's now- JP Morgan and HSBC. I mean, they, Deutsche Bank. These companies have admitted to to, to rigging the market, so it's not uh, it's not far fetched to say that they've admitted to rigging the precious metal markets. Yeah. Okay. Now, you've recently, actually yesterday, written uh, a fantastic article. I'll read the title. Uh, Is gold money? China and Russia think so, and the whole world shortly will too. Uh, Can you explain that, please? Yes, it goes back. It's kind of a sequel to an article I wrote maybe three years ago called Is Gold Money? Who Cares? Uh, Which Uh, people who know me would, would think that's a crazy title for me, but if you really read me, understand... I'm not what you call a quote gold bug, and that's I don't even like that term because it it implies someone who's kind of religiously cultish about gold, which I'm not. I consider it the best storage of value uh, that man has ever known, based on thousands of years of history. And the reason that I own it is not because I expect there to be a gold standard, but because I believe it will preserve wealth through no matter what happens, as history's largest, as I call history's largest, most destructive fiat Ponzi scheme implodes as it has been serially uh, nation by nation and it will continue to do so until the dollar is enveloped in it as well uh, but again gold people it's kind of a misnomer about gold that it's you know it's the best form of quote money when you know from a transactional standpoint it's you know it's not as easy to use it's much easier to store and use for giant transactions for instance like between China and Russia than it is to buy something You know, you hold it because it's a storage of value, not because it's a gold standard. That said, China and Russia kind of surprised me. I mean, they're they're clearly the two biggest buyers in the world of gold. And uh, they are clearly two of the two nations that are desperately trying to wean themselves from being stuck on this dollar fiat standard. And so what they just agreed to uh, yesterday, they're in, well, yesterday they've been in the process of this for a few months, is a bilateral trade agreement where they are going to settle transactions based on gold, for instance, like buying of massive amounts of oil, let's say, Um, instead of transacting in primarily, it used to be dollars, now it's, they use rubles and yuan, but they're going to use gold as well. And it's going to make people realize around the world that in, you know, for for governments, it can actually be used as a a trade settlement vehicle, uh, meaning money. And so I think once these fiat currencies have another leg down, I think you're going to see more and more governments start to seriously consider these kind of um, these kind of cross-border transactions. Interesting. I'm looking at the top of milesfranklin.com, and it very conveniently gives me the current spot prices of gold, silver, palladium, platinum, and so on. Uh, we've got gold at 1256.60, silver at 1835. Where do we see these prices going? Because I've had the chance to interview some very prominent people. Some of them said uh, gold at 10,000 is not unrealistic. What do you think? Well, again, 
you know, and, and what currency are you talking about, right? Because if you talk about most of the currencies around the world, it's at or near an all-time high. In fact, you know, I was talking about today about South Africa, which is theoretically this amazing brick country. It's obviously not, but, you know, it's, it's looked at as one of the top emerging market countries. Well, it just got downgraded to junk status yesterday uh, or two days ago, and the price of gold and rand has gone up 13% in two days or three days, uh, and it's near an all-time high. So, but... In dollar price terms, we peaked in 2011 because you know this is the center of gold manipulation here because the dollar, the U.S. government is trying to protect its reserve currency status that deals like this Russia-China thing are, are slowly eating away at. Uh, the petrodollar standard is probably going to die pretty soon too. It's going to probably die with Saudi Arabia as oil prices go to the floor. Uh, but again, uh, you know what's going to happen with prices? You know, we're going to have physical shortages at some time. We had them in 2008 and 11 and 13 and 15 for different, to different extents. And right now we're in this precarious position where the cartel, after four years of holding precious metals under their 200-week moving averages, they finally pushed back above it. They actually got up briefly above it uh, right after the Brexit. And then on Election Day Eve, just before the cartel came in, smashed prices down again. And here we are again. I was just writing about it today, the 200 week, not 200 day, 200 week moving averages, which gold and silver were above basically from 2003 to 13 before Obama had his infamous uh, closed door meeting with all the too big to fail bank CEOs on April 11, 2013. And then two days later, the price got or one day later, the price got smashed by 10 percent and they held it down for the, the following three years. Well, here we are. We are we are back above them again. Those 200 week moving averages are 1246 and 1813 and we're above those right now uh, and it's all at a time where this kind of perfect storm politically and economically and geopolitically look what's going on in Europe all these things all happening at the same time the debt ceiling crisis uh, is about to hit the French elections could be what I call a Brexit times 100 and you know we're seeing record demand around the world and you know falling supplies production for gold is now I've been saying for years it would fall and now even Standard & Poor's analysts are saying yes 20 to 25 percent decline in production over the next eight to ten years silver also peaked in 2015 production and that's going down so i think we're going to have a perfect storm of supply demand um you know fundamentals hitting at the same time and then of course you have these currencies that are continually going to be hyperinflated and you know where could prices go well you know the numbers if you do the simple math i mean based on if you use the math based on how much uh, money has been printed and reported and how much gold the uh, central banks say they have, like the fictional 8,133 tons that the Mint says it has, but it probably has none of that. Uh, it could, you know, my number is is 15 to 20,000 for gold. Uh, but obviously they have a lot less gold than they say they have, and there's been a lot more dollars and yen and yuan and euros printed than they say they have. So, you know, the sky's the limit. It's all a matter of confidence. It was like I was writing today about, they said uh, Venezuela's money supply tripled in the last year. Uh, and look, they're having hyperinflation. I'm going, yeah, but you know, China, uh, Japan's has you know gone up two and a half times in the past two years, and they haven't had hyperinflation. Why? It's all about confidence. Once the con game that is fiat currency uh, breaks down, and it's already broken down in most of the world's currencies, including the euro um, and and uh, several other of the larger currencies, it, it, the pound is at basically an all-time low. It'll eventually get to the reserve currency dollar, and when it does. You're going to see uh, the cartel break, and uh, and prices could go anywhere. You've referenced that a uh, Waterloo, uh, ca the cartels, silver and gold Waterloo in particular, are mathematically a necessity. They're imminent. It's going to happen, and even sooner than we can all imagine. Um, how can we protect ourselves? What can we do? Right, and I don't know if I said it is imminent. I said it could be. <laughs> right, it could be a lot sooner than we can imagine. Because right now, I was just highlighting a few things. I look at the, uh, the, the Comex commercials, you know, that commercials, you know, that's theoretically like a J.P. Morgan. No, that's the U.S. government. That's their minions uh, that are naked shorting. And I looked up and I said, wow, they last as of last week, uh, before the price started moving up, the commercial short position in silver was essentially at an all time high. And yet we haven't had a crisis. I mean, you know, the last time we had it at an all time high was right, right, right after the Brexit where there was a crisis. Here, they're, they're that desperate that they've actually shorted to an all-time high level, like, you know, like all the silver that's ever <laughs> been mined is short right now. And there's not even a crisis at the moment. So obviously, they're worried. We've seen that in 2016 alone, uh, the amount of paper trading, i.e. naked shorting in the U.S. and and, uh, and London was up 50 percent from 2015, 50 percent. 
which is, shows you how much paper has to be shorted just to keep the prices from exploding at this point. And prices actually went up while that was happening. And then I was looking at, the, you're starting to see a, the beginning of what could be a, a bit of a run on the inventories at the comics, which are already, I mean, there's only like $500 million worth of silver theoretically available for delivery at the comics and a billion dollars of gold. It means it's penny change to start with. Um, so, you know, and all these things going on, it, it's just, it appears to me that especially with the 200 week moving averages now being breached to, to the upside, um, you know, there's the potential for the next big shortage coming. And, you know, if the cart, if the other cartels like the PPTs and the bonds, uh, you know, the, the, the central banks can't keep a lid on, on this ridiculously manipulated uh, market or stock market. You know, for even a second, we're going to have a crisis, and there's going to be massive uh, shortages of, of safe haven assets like precious metals. So we have to start preparing now, I would imagine. Now, if somebody came to Miles Franklin and wanted to set up a precious metals IRA, for example, uh, what would you recommend? Uh, gold eagles, silver eagles? What would you say? Well, first off, and look, we you know we sell all these products, but my first thing would be to not have an IRA. I would say cash your IRA out. I mean, we're turning into the social states of America, uh, and we've they've threatened to confiscate IRAs back in 2008, 2009, and you know tax rates are only going to go up no, whether they confiscate them or not. So I would say the best thing to do is cash out your IRA, uh, pay the taxes. If you're under 59 and a half, you'll pay a 10 percent penalty. I did when I was 39 years old, but seven years ago and um, but you know if you want a precious metal IRA we can offer you all kinds I mean we, we there's no product that we can't uh, you know help you to get into uh, and yes we would recommend generally speaking we recommend bullion coins not numismatics unless you're an expert and the most liquid bullion coins you're gonna find are typically American Eagles Canadian Maples you know uh, Australian Philharmonics so uh, Austra uh, Austrian Australian kangaroos it's pretty simple, and um, and uh, you know we, we can help you to make those decisions. It's actually pretty easy. Absolutely. Just a couple more questions, if I may. Uh, you have an audio blog in addition to all of your written articles. Uh, what types of topics can people expect to hear on your audio blog? Well, again, I, I write pretty much, I would say, four articles a week, and I do an audio blog every week, which is basically I, I script an article. Uh, I script a free-flowing thing about all kinds of topics and talk about it. I did one this morning, uh, and it was you know, 20, 25 minutes long talking about everything. It's uh, polit it, I say political. It's anything that's related to financial markets, whether it's economic, m monetary, political, et cetera. And uh, it's, it's really no different than the topics uh, that I write about or what we're talking about here. Absolutely. And finally, the million dollar question, if I may. Uh, this toppy, at least I think it's a bit frothy, uh, if not a bubble uh, stock market that we're in right now. Um, 2017, is, is the big crash going to happen this year or when can people possibly expect it? Well, again, markets are, are permanently supported by, by the PPTs, various PPTs around the world, particularly the, the strongest ones like ours. And, you know, theoretically, the market may never crash uh, in in uh, nominal terms. I mean, they can hyperinflate it. People f people don't even realize that, like last year, the best performing stock market in the world was Venezuela, because of hyperinflation. So in real terms, you got destroyed. But yes, it can go up. And if I had to guess, I I, I mean, look, you look how it is now. It's gotten to the point where they won't even let it go down one percent a day. They won't even let it go down a half percent in a day these days. No matter what happens, uh, it's just they they've mastered the art of paper manipulation. And I think they'll like any other central bank, especially armed with these kind of trading manipulation tools, they'll be happy to hyperinflate it rather than the opposite. Of course, you know, the more that more obvious that becomes, uh, the more that inflationary expectations are going to increase. And as I said, the velocity of money and, and that's going to make prices go up and it's going to cause, you know, all kinds of economic and political and social hell. So um, you can have a crash in real ter in in real terms without having, without having one in nominal terms. All it takes is a loss of confidence. And again, there's so much that's going on in the world this year. I mean, you you name you pick your poison. I mean, first of all, if Marine Le Pen wins the French election, and I, I predicted that Trump would win, and I predicted the Brexit last year, and I'm predicting that she will win. And if she wins, I would say that that will be have the impact of a Brexit times a hundred, because Europe will fall apart, 
and who knows what will be the impact. There will certainly be a crash if that occurs. That's just one event. And Greece is probably going to finally uh, default a month later in July. Um, so that's just two events that are out there. What's going on? You know, India is falling apart, this, this crazy cash ban. Uh, you know, we have all this political discord here, tr all this Trumpflation BS is being realized that none of it's going to actually happen. We have our debt ceiling crisis. Uh, you know, you have other things going on. Catalonia might secede from Spain uh, by the fall. So, you know, is a, there's, there's more, more than ever we have, we see with all the, the debts exploding and the, the defaults and delinquencies. There's so many more reasons why 2017 is likely to happen than in, than any other time, but we'll see how far the powers can be then get it. I don't think they'll be able to to make any dent in gold and silver no matter what. I think it's the supply and demand has gotten too tight, and uh, and I think that irrespective of whether they can stave off collapse uh, in 2017, I think that gold and silver are uh, well beyond their bottoms and getting ready as they as they now exceed their 200-week moving averages for an extended multi-year run so much to think about we all need to be prepared and the time to prepare is now if people want to contact you and or miles franklin how can they do that yes milesfranklin.com or you can uh, call us at 800-822-8080 we also have by the way online purchasing and you can also email me at a hoffman at milesfranklin.com <laughs> Excellent, sir. I will put all of that information in the description for the video. Uh, the market is open now. I know we all want to be active traders, and so I'll let you go. But thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it, Mr. Andy Hoffman. Okay, thanks. And by the way, we do not all want to be active traders. I decidedly <laughs> do not. I am a buy and hold of assets that can protect my wealth over time. But everyone's different. There you go. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate your time so much today. Oh, same here. Thank you, David. Okay.